Oh, yes, I'm online. Hello. Welcome. My name's Milo. This is my stream series. Today's actually a bonus stream. It's not part of the main thing. Like, sorry, I'm, I'm just uh, adjusting some things with my streaming setup at the last minute. Okay, good to go. Alright, so, yes, as you know, if you've been following my streams, I've been playing games starring women all this year. Um, this is one I played earlier in the year, Catwoman, for the Game Boy Advance. It's based on the Hall Halle Berry movie. Yes, this again! <laughs> Given. I, I just keep thinking about this game, I don't know why. I want to get it finished, you know. Um, instead of... Um, yeah, this last week I've been um, doing bonus streams of uh, pixel art and creative stuff, but I'm going to do a bonus game stream today outside the norm. I'll just get my notes up here. Oh, why wasn't I ready? <laughs> anyway, yes, so today will be a little more casual than normal, I think. So just keep it chill. Oopsie. Yeah, I've forgotten how this game works exactly. I had a super mode that I could activate somehow. And I was supposed to stealth around those guards, but I didn't. Yeah, I got to about this point in the game and it, I've been going for about two and a half hours and Gibbon said, you know you're only halfway through the amount of levels that there are, right? I was like, what? That's nuts. So, yep, okay, control. Open the doors. I do actually have a few things to talk about because I was thinking about running this again and that got me thinking about, uh, oh, okay, here we go. Ah, uh, yes, Eleanor, of course. That's a common button combination for games. All right, a chair, important. I think you probably whip the chair and pull it. Um. <laughs> Good job that guard couldn't see me. Okay. Now. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh. I guess I had to press a button or something to do that properly. Super mode, not quite warranted. Oops, two guards. Um, yeah. So the, the original reason that I played this game in the first place was that it was Black History Month. Um, for America, ouch, to um, recognize and celebrate the heritage of African Americans in the country. Uh, whoopsie. Okay. No! Um, rewind. Yes. I do want to get this finished today, and the objective is speed. Oops. Wow, really? Some very deadly lasers here. Obviously pink is the um, most high energy color for lasers. That's not true, it'd be purple. Pink would be at the low end of this energy spectrum. So why don't you show me that? Whoops, nope, not that. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh, there's like a lens flare on the light. That's pretty cool. How do I get health back again? So, uh, oh, it wasn't showing me the light, it was showing me the laser thing, I guess. There aren't many games that where the star of the show is a black woman. So, last time I streamed this, I talked for a while about games that do fit into that category, ones that I could find, um, thanks to enterprising bloggers in that community and my own research. So why don't we do a recap of that first, because I found a few more to add to the list. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, my notes document is getting long. I keep just adding to the top of it, you know, for each new uh, week of streams. <clears throat> Oh. 
You know, we haven't even seen the antagonist of the game yet. Expensive perfume. Oh, maybe we will be seeing her soon. Oh, uh, yep. Okay, I got the biggest life bar. Maybe these levels go quicker than the previous ones. Damn it. Almost got stealth yet. Whoa. Ouch. <laughs> Stealth, no, not stealthy enough. Super mode, pow pow. Yeah, don't you touch anything, buddy. All right. Hey, big boy, why so serious? Keep in mind, this is way before Dark Knight returns. Wait, Dark, the Dark Knight? Yeah, yeah. A few years before, I guess. Okay, so our target is a piano player. I knew I couldn't trust those musical jerks. How long does super mode last? Okay, it's done. Oh, um, hi. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> you lost track of Batman movies, yeah. I remember the ones, some of the ones in the 90s. I don't know how many... I like I watched in order I didn't like religiously keep up with it oopsie yeah that's right Gibbon says they weren't good they were not good for a long while nailed it oh I guess I shouldn't have hit that spot ow okay that didn't work um can I get under this hard to tell the y-axis you know Isn't there a wall run thing? There's a wall climb. Yeah. Or, yeah, cling. Yeah, this is, so this is like a soft Batman spin-off. It was going to be directly tying into Batman Returns. But thanks to development hell and such, it ended up being more its own thing. I talked about it all that last time, which was in February, so it was a few months ago. Shoot on sight. Mrs. Hedaya told me to lock her room and the study. Watch your back. Luckily, these guys don't really watch their back very well. I like that whole spider sense mode that turns on, but I think it just is an automatic thing for when you enter a room. It'd be cool if you could activate that at any time to see important things actually for all you for all i know you can i just uh, yeah. ah. Aww. totally got killed why don't i load back oh here oh, whatever okay i can skip the armed guards coming in through this bit. So this switches the important bits. Oops. <clears throat> oh, really? What's the problem here, guys? Whatever, I'll just find a bunch of dudes. It's fine. I'll do it like this. Super mode.
yeah, so my list started in 1994 with Bebe's Kids, which is one of the examples of a black girl being a co-star, a co-lead. That's a beat em up based on an animated movie. <clears throat> then Urban Chaos in 1999, I played that on stream, Darcy Stern. Uh, is definitely the lead, although she does trade off playability with another guy at certain points. Um, Enter the Matrix, Niobe again is the lead, but has Ghost as a, like a equal level campaign that you can go through as well, and a partner character as well. Um, and interrupting that is this cutscene. Is the man of the house at home? What does that mean? Afraid not, but he'll be sorry he missed you. He's a real cat person. Who isn't? Nice purr. So she has a golf club? I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. Maybe this is all very um, authentic to stuff that happens there. Wow, I'm just totally stun locking her. Yeah, okay. Well, that was easy. Was that a boss fight? Can we talk about this? Girl to girl? Oh, that would be fun. We could do each other's hair and talk about boys. Nice sarcasm. I want George, and if I can't get to him, then I can at least scratch up something he loves. Loves? He's replaced me as the face of Hidea. I'd cry if I cared. I want evidence. Evidence of what? Bowline. It's disease in a jar. That man. George is capable of anything. So am I. Where can I find him? We had tickets for Hydropolis tonight at the Performance Center downtown. I think she's deflecting. I think she's the real brains of this operation. I want to help. How can I reach you? I'm not listed. Just shine the cat signal in the sky. Oh, she stole her cell phone. I mean, mobile phone, cell phone, telephone. Let's go for a climb. Okay, now if I recall, there was a shoulder button thing, no, whoops, <laughs> that's right, it was this one, and then, nope, <clears throat> okay, as we climb, what else did we have, yep, yeah, Resident Evil 5 also had a co-lead, um, To the Moon and its sequel Finding Paradise, indie adventure games that also were a co-shared position, so I think, the first one where it's solely a playable black woman is Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, at least from this list I'm working off. Um, that was a an Assassin's Creed spin-off for the Vita, although I think it was ported to everything else later. And I noted it at the time that although it's a step forward in representation, um, like yeah, it's just a spin-off, but... Okay. Um, it's still an important, uh, important for that representation. But they did have her voice actress was a white woman, which is a conversation that has that came up yesterday actually in my social circles thanks to um, some cartoon casting decisions and how it's changed over time. People uh, used. There used to, well, there's always been like a lot of white guys in the voice acting industry and if they had an ethnic character they would just get those same voice actors to do a stereotypical accent um oops okay so that's how that works um but more recently they've tried harder at uh getting people to play their own uh culture <laughs> or uh, ethnicity or whatever um yeah so that same issue applies to remember me in 2013 uh the kind of flop of a capcom action game the developers went on to make life is strange so they're doing pretty well for themselves now and i think they just released that vampire game which i don't know i don't know if that's doing well or not Vampires. Mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Oh, 
Magic gems. I don't care. Yep, skipping that. Or maybe I can't get through that. Okay, yeah, I think I have to do this. Possibly. Maybe. Lip maze. Then we had Broken Age, where there was a black girl as the co-lead again. Um, Sunset, the stylish uh, indie adventure game, kind of. Um, oh yeah, The Walking Dead spin-off Mission, where you play as Mission. Um, the lag, I can't believe it. Okay, maybe I can do a, just a horizontal jump. Yep. Okay, that works. Um, and then I ended the list with Dandara, who is... Um, yeah, that's an indie Metroidvania thing with a different kind of movement system where you only cling to walls, you don't walk around. You are always, like, bouncing between walls. Yeah, that's true, Gibbon. Um, games with like prominent um, voice acting, they don't often have a, the commitment to diversity that we would like. Although, having said that, um, remember how I played Lammy a few weeks ago? I, I was on the website Behind the Voice Actors, which is a cool way to look up um, people who've been voice actors um and yeah i was surprised by the diversity in that game there's a lot of um african-american voices in there lemmy herself is played by a latina woman and another factoid that came out of that was master onion who is voiced by a japanese guy um he reprises his role as the same character in the Parappa anime, which only had a only had a Japanese dub, um, because he's bilingual. So, anyway, when I found that out, I started saying, "Oh yeah, like Katie and Lemmy are the first interracial gay couple in video games," <laughs> which is, you know, slightly disingenuous, but. <laughs> So that was my list from back then. Um, I've actually added a few things to it now, so I'll tell you about some other cool games I found where you can play as a black woman, or prominently. Um, so the first one that actually comes to mind is, uh, oh yes, I didn't mention the honorable mentions. Um, Dead Island has uh, an indigenous Australian woman as one of the several playable characters. Left for Dead and Evolve similarly have uh, large casts, uh, including at least one black woman. Um, there's X-Men games where you play a Storm, who is played by Halle Berry in the X-Men movies, just as our good friend Catwoman Patience Phillips here is. Um, yeah, take that. Didn't even hear you. Beautiful. Um, what else? Final Fantasy XII? I've got a note here, I don't remember anything about that, but it's it's written here. Um, no More Heroes 2? Do you place anyone other than... What's his face? Um, guy? <laughs> the nerd guy? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what else? Hunter the Reckoning? I don't even remember what that is. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil, which I saw on some lists on uh, these blogs that I mentioned. Um, so blogs written by black women saying here's some examples of uh, people representing us in video games and Jade was on that list uh, and I was like wait Jade really but you like I can't deny that if, if it's if it's coming from black women saying like I identify with this character then who am I to say well actually I don't think she's black like um because she's she's not white so 
Now, what do I do here? <laughs> that was silly. Maybe this is a higher level. Yeah, I think it might be. No, no, I've been here. So yeah, I would I would put Jade on that list at this point. Um, don't know how Beyond Good and Evil 2 is even going to work, but I think her mother is in that game. I don't really know the story at this point. Um, yeah, and that's the thing, like, you can't... This is something I learned from the... Australian Indigenous mentoring experience um, is if someone identifies and, and you know we have on on a lot of official forms here do identify as Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander and just because someone doesn't fit a traditional look of what you think a black person is or an Indigenous person you can't tell them they're not that's ridiculous like so it was pretty um, prejudiced of me to say no, I don't think Jade is black. But. So, yeah, absolutely. Beyond Good and Evil. It's a great game, too. <sighs> cool. So, yes, and two more things. Her Adventures, an interactive story thing, and Grab by the Ghoulies, which I brought up right at the very end of the last stream, which I just checked to make sure that I was at the same position um, in terms of progress for this game. I'm really stuck here. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> um... Yeah, grab by the ghoulies, you can unlock a mission right at the end where you play as someone who unfortunately is kind of a mammy stereotype character, uh, Ma Soupswell, but at the same time, like, I don't know, it could be seen as a positive thing, that she's playable and stuff, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, um, good anecdote there, given the experience. His, so I'll just quote what he's saying, he had a chat with... Anya about that because he says not that I really think about this sort of thing much but I would very much have considered her quote unquote white if asked about it but she identifies as Filipino which are apparently peoples of color so this is a more complex and nuanced than I knew being a Germanic white guy yeah definitely and um, same for me in that, in that circumstance as well um, definitely more nuanced than uh, I would initially think as a white guy so yeah. Um, so I brought up just now, yeah, so transitioning from that old list I had, I added some more things to that list and the first thing um, is connected to the AIME, the Australian Indigenous Mentoring Experience, um, which is a thing that helps Indigenous students, just helps them in different ways um, during their schooling. Okay, so I'm missing something here, what's going on? And yeah, so AIM did this project to make a game and I played it a couple of weeks ago on my Indigenous Australian Games stream. So the game that came out of that eventually is called Second Chances and it's a, like a hybrid soccer slash educational kind of game on iOS. Man, this sucks. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, in case you missed it, the answer is this. <laughs> wow. <sighs> Okay, um, so Second Chances was a lot of fun. I played through a small part of it on the stream. Really, n not really enough to get a full grasp of the game because there are other aspects to it that reveal themselves after you're done with the first match, which I wasn't able to complete during the stream. So I actually went and played it on my own time. Um, oops, yep, swing this way. Oh, wow. I probably mentioned it the last time I streamed this, but the pre-rendered sprites look 
I dig it. Um, and it's a style that's kind of disappeared <laughs> over time. They're trying to cram in more detail than they can really handle at these sprite resolutions. Hi there, bad boys. Bet you can't see me. <laughs> That's cluing us into use some stealth here, why don't you? Uh, yes, so I, I've, I've played through and finished second chances now. Um, how do you do wall jumps? And one, it's, it's like a lot of sport games Engaging with the mechanics I find difficult and not always that fun, um, which may or may, may not be the fault of the games, but I found it to be often the case. Um, like maybe they're just not <laughs> like complex enough. Control check is complete, but I mean, what can you do on a touch screen? But anyway. The point is, I don't want to miss this dialogue, sorry. Don't lose the key. Need four keys. When the show's over, you'll collect them, okay. So I have to beat up some guards and get four keys. Oh, nope, you didn't see anything. Yeah, so I can only make progress in those games when I figured out some kind of exploit for the systems and the mechanics in which case in, in, in this case it was um, I found that if I had control of the ball and I ran up to the goalkeeper and then hit the trick button which lets you do like a uh, what do you call it a nutmeg thing or whatever you can like dribble the ball through someone else's tackle so when the goalkeeper goes to grab it off you you just do a little um, fancy footwork and avoid avoid the goalkeeper and then you just run the ball straight past the line um, and sometimes you need to shoot sometimes the goalie can tackle you after that point but you can pretty reliably get just instant goals just by running straight at the goal line and um, tricking past it so once I figured out that out I didn't really have any trouble with beating any soccer match of the game it made it quite trivial actually but occasionally I would try and get a goal the, the quote unquote intended way by like passing back and forth and taking a shot uh, if the goalie left it open but I, I was bad at that and could never actually pull it off 90% uh, of the time so yeah, I got the keys pretty simply, and we get in. But yeah, like I said, there were systems in the game that I didn't get to show off on the stream, such as the quiz questions bit. There was the brief... <laughs> okay, can't do that fall. Um, there is a brief... Uh, oops, oh gosh. What have I done? Okay, yep, yeah. all right, we're here. There's a brief... Um, quiz before each match where the character, what's he called? Um, oh, it started with a H, I don't remember. It was like a guy in a cloak. He quizzes you and he has unclear motives, but I'll, I mean, I'll spoil it for you. So you know, if you if you were, if you were gonna play second chances, um, look out for spoilers. Uh, you find out later that he's actually your teacher in disguise and your teacher in this case is a goldfish in a bowl with glasses um, I don't remember his name either but you see him in these other quiz sections that I'm talking about so between matches there's all these uh, there's other options you can do one of them is uh, like studying study training and another one is relationship training, or like, what, what do you call it? Like, you're resolving conflicts between members of your team, um, which uh, go like a conversation, an interactive conversation. So those are the two modes, and 
if you do those two activities well, you get extra like upgrade points to spend before you start a match to make your players' skills improve. And before every match, you have that other quiz with the hooded man who, and you can only use your your like special skills during a match if you've passed that. Although I think at least one of the questions was bugged, so that caused a few failures on my part. Okay, so here's another man. Just a different guard sprite this time. Yeah, he was no, no contest. Okay, um... Okay, the leave is not enough. This gentleman. Notice that those two guards, the, the one I just beat up before and this one now, have the same sprite and uniform, but they have different skin tones. So that's some nice diversity. Um, I've noticed a similar thing with Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, where you get stormtroopers of different genders and ethnicities. Okay, we've got like ocean-themed backdrops back here. I forget what we're doing at any point in this game, but I, I guess we're infiltrating, like, a theater? <sighs> so, I got that key card. Yeah, so that's something I noticed as I continued to play the game, was there were these bugs and typos and all sorts of things that made me annoyed. Um, some of the questions were badly worded or had spelling mistakes. Um, so that was pretty frustrating for me. I'm pretty sensitive to uh, gr grammar and, and spelling and stuff. Um, especially when it affected how I was able to progress in the game. Like that bugs question I mentioned. Okay, I can't make that jump. Ooh, that looks like. Hmm. This seems unintended, but maybe I can make it work. I'm, I'm developing speedrun strats right here. This is called uh, Lift Skip. If you jump on this shelf, you can jump straight up to this gantry. No, I don't think you actually can. <clears throat> So yeah, uh, between the matches in Second Chances, you you had to do all these things to get your players in good shape, and then you recruit more players as you go on, and there's some nice little fun character designs in there. Um, so yeah, the, the, the questions for study training come in all different uh, categories, you know, physics, maths, um, engineering, computers. And the questions aren't too difficult, but like, again, the um, game was developed for high school students or middle school students. So for that age group, they some of them would be pretty challenging, I think. Hmm. Is there a wall run or something? I don't think there is. At least not that I recall. There's a wall jump. You can only do that sometimes. And it's not helping me here. So yeah, the the relationship conflicts thing was, I think, one of the more interesting parts of the game. Um, or at least the part with potential. They were individually crafted, like, conversations where you would resolve these issues that people had with each other so it's it, it's like it had a good message um the game which i think was one of the stated goals of the project was to get people to get kids and students interested in studying in a different way and teaching them lessons along the way sort of what's this about oh there's perfume near this so gas what it's not perfume it's gas what did I just smell? What's going on? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> this music loop needs some zest. These things were a different colour. That's got to be important, right? Can you jump further? Hmm, doesn't appear to. This is, this is ridiculous. to get up there to reach that gas, I suppose. <sighs> um, yeah, so in these conversations you uh, progress by giving positive options that develop the relationship between characters and you fail them if you give them like insults or um, things that would turn them against each other. So that's kind of the, the message part of the game, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's about resolving conflicts in friend groups and stuff. It's all relatable, even though at the same time, the game has a lot of fun, like sci-fi fantasy trappings or surrealist even, where two of the characters are like, androids one of them is a yeti from a different dimension um, it's all pretty low-key though like it's not really a focus I don't know what to do I'm gonna look up a walkthrough because this is a casual stream the chat bar is working so that means I can use my backup iPad to look up a walkthrough Mm. Anyway, the whole point of the second chances thing is that, like, while I think the game isn't perfect, it's actually a good example of um, a yeah positive main character who's a black girl. There is no walkthrough. Fantastic. Didn't I find one once? And I, yeah, I do believe the intention for Molly was that she is um, Indigenous Australian. But again, it's not like really drawn attention to the game it's just sort of a normal part of life for these characters she's definitely wearing the aim shirt though which is a bit of a giveaway well i got codes to do things yeah i think we're on our own here that's okay we have the skills and the brains to get through this don't we Let's try sniffing this again. Let's see if we can get a clean. Oh, I touched it. What, did, what does that mean? <laughs> oh. Gas. Cough gas. And then it shows me that thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's Molly. Molly. Um, from Second Chances. 
I liked her design a lot as well. And she has character development over the game through these conversations and stuff. It's quite cool. Mm -hmm. Alright, what I can do is... Controls? No. Damn. Unlocked attacks. Whip kick. Oh, how do I do whip kick? Oh yeah, hold, I'll hold down B. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah, I'll try that next time. Well, it didn't tell me about a wall run or anything. She seemed to touch this one instead of sniffing it. I wonder why that is. Yeah, that. No, not that. I don't know. I think that's just to show you what you need to interact with up there. <clears throat> Alright, so having said that, there's some more games to add to the list of uh, games where you star as a black woman. Do, 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 do. Okay, so first one I had here was a, a, like a yeah, an interesting game from 1988 called Freedom Rebels in the Darkness. Um, it was released for the Amiga and several other home computers that were popular in Europe and that era. Um, so it was made in France by Cocktail Vision. And it was sort of, it's like, it was described when I sort of read it as a sort of Sid Meier's Pirates kind of game where you had different gameplay styles. It's sort of a simulation strategy thing, but then there were bits where you transitioned to like a fighting game almost, um, and other kinds of gameplay stuff. And it had a really interesting theme. <laughs> um, in the game, you pick your character from a list of four, and two of them are women. Um, and your goal is to lead a rebellion of a slave rebellion because you're a slave on a tropical plantation. So that's that's pretty interesting, um, especially for 1988. And yeah, so. You're, you've got like you're in this like community of African slaves, and you have to do all these things to manage the situation so that you end up escaping. So the two ladies are Solitude and Delia, and um, yeah, I don't know how popular and widespread that game is, but. Um, certainly stood out as, you know, experiencing this uh, kind of thing that historically happened and putting you in that situation, having you deal with it. It's really good for, you know, empathy and education to play through something like that. All right, something's wrong. What do I do? Maybe I can whip that light. Nope, it's just a foreground object. Alright, so can I jump? Do you think these are platforms that I can get onto? It's, it's, it suggests... The fact that the lights are so big suggests to me that there's a perspective thing going on where it's supposed to be close to the, you know, player view camera thing. So I don't think they're actually interactive, interactable. I jump and then attack. I hate this. I hate this. What am I doing? I'm gonna spend my like whole day just running around this room. Mm. And what is this for? Is it just? Here for decoration. So if I 
interact with this, it shows me cough gas. Yeah, should I drunk this boss? Excuse me, let me in, please. I should say, for the sake of this discussion, um, a black person is not necessarily African American, um, even though uh, that's the reason I started playing this game in the first place. Black History Month is for African Americans. Um, yeah. But I guess if you're talking about history, it expands beyond that anyway. Yeah, the people in freedom. Uh, actually, I don't know where that's supposed to be to take place. Anyway, the next thing on my list is also called Freedom, but with an exclamation mark, and it doesn't have a subtitle. Uh, but this is actually specifically about African Americans, or at least African slaves in America. Um, this is a really weird game, or at least it has a weird history. Uh, it was released in 1992 for the Apple II. And it's kind of like Rebels in the Darkness, in that you, you, it's it's sort of an education game where you play through the experience of a slave in the American South. Um, and yeah, I saw it compared to like Oregon Trail or something, where you play through someone's life in that situation and. Um, it's kind of like an adventure game, and you pick options as you go along. Um, so yeah, you start out by picking whether you're a man or a woman, so... You know, it's an option. Um, and then, yeah, you interact with people and go through the country to escape to the north, where you won't be a slave anymore. Now, <laughs> the funny thing is the game wasn't around very long. It was actually pulled from shelves possibly in 1993, one year after its release, or possibly a bit later, I'm not sure. Um, it was used in schools as part of the curriculum to teach them about history, but I think some parents caught on to the fact that <laughs> they didn't like the use of sort of stereotypical um, appearance and mannerisms and like patterns of speech that were used by the black characters in the game. So the, it's got pretty simple graphics, but uh, the <laughs> the faces of the black people in the game could be considered uh, uh, stereotypically like you know racist, basically. Um, So that was actually, yeah, it was pulled from shelves, it was pulled out of school curriculums. Um, copies of it were destroyed um, at request of the company. Um, and there was a lawsuit even by, yeah, by school parents um, towards the makers of the game, MECC. So that didn't end well for them. So annoyed about this. What did I do last time I was stuck? Maybe there's like a video walkthrough that I can just watch. Like I said, it's a casual stream. Don't worry about it. I'm just trying to progress, dudes. Yeah, this one. There's a video walkthrough, of course. Catwoman GBA number. Brackets gameplay dot API. I wonder how far. Oh yep. 
Oh, this is the level I just did. Yeah, okay. We'll get there. No worries, people. Surely the answer will present itself soon. Now they're playing Spanish, that's interesting. This is Dagoth V's channel, D A E G O T H V. So thank you to this player. Oh, well, that's interesting. They got a gas canister and then they blew up the balloons at the bottom. Okay, but how did they get up there? Let's go back a few seconds. All right, watching. They're pulling the lever. Okay, platform's coming down. Excellent, good so far. Okay, they've climbed on. They're rising into the air. They're on the platform that I've been stuck on. And now... <gasps> they did a wall run! Damn it. I knew that was a mechanic. I knew it. I knew it. How do I do it? Uh, this is what you get for not playing a game for like six months and then expecting to come back halfway through and finish it. <laughs> so there's got to be a button. Oh, was that it? No, it's jump and then... Nope, not that. Hmm, maybe a manual will tell me. So now I have to try and find a scan of a manual. Catwoman GBA manual scan. Oh wow. Okay, no, that doesn't help. Okay, well, that doesn't exist. So we're going to figure this out. Okay, so if I jump or if I run and then... Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so just in case for any of you at home, the answer is that you hold R as you run up against the wall. And then... That was very stupid. Okay, well, I was very stupid in this situation. So I have the gas. Some kind of freak show? Yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah! That was the grab kick. You should kick him when he's down, Catwoman. You're an anti-hero. Okay, so using the gas canister, I put it in there, and then we have these cat head balloons with a trapeze swing on the bottom to help us get to that other area. Okay, give me this back. Hello? Oh, do I need more gas canisters? Oh, I have multiple gas canisters, so I picked up three of them somehow. Okay. And for some reason that causes this platform to activate. It wasn't just there for looks. Cool. Oops. So, what other games are there where you can play as a black woman, or that star a black woman? Ah, yes, the next one's pretty cool. Um, remember when I did my Star Wars stream and I was like, there's only three or four games where that are Star Wars games where um, the main character is a woman. And I had in, among that company uh, Battlefront 2, the campaign. Uh, Jedi Knight Mysteries of the Sith, which is what I ended up playing. Um, hey guys, want to have some fun? Which, you know, only the last three quarters of the campaign you play as Mara Jade, but she's kind of the main sort of draw of that expansion, I suppose, in terms of its campaign. Yeah, sure. Can I invite my friends? Whatever, dude. Yo, we've got a Joker here. Can you come on over? The Joker exists in this universe. Come on. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with you. In super mode? Yeah, extra damage. Haha. <laughs> um, and 
the other one, the other Star Wars game was, of course I played it at the end of the stream just a little bit, what was it called? Lethal Alliance. So Rihanna Saren is a cool character that I like. Do -do. But yeah, there was one missing from that list um, because I didn't know about it. People I asked didn't think of it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of flight sims in um, the universe of Star Wars games. Um, you know, your X-Wings, your TIE Fighters, your Rogue Squadrons. Um, but of course, there's also... What happened? What an anti-climax. You weren't as much fun as I'd hoped. What? Did I just get teleport into the next room or did more guards appear? What's going on? So it's just like arena fights. Okay. Um, so yes, among the spaceship battle games, uh, there was a game called, now this is from memory, Naboo Starfighter. Um, on the PS2 generation of consoles, which was uh, wall run. That's the thing that Catwoman can do in this game. Did you know that? Oh, God. Um, yeah. So there was that game you play as like I don't know, a boo starfighter or something. But there was also the character of Nim, who's a pirate. Uh, anyway, this comes up because there was a sequel to Naboo Starfighter called Jedi Starfighter, where you've got the old, um, uh, what are they called? You know the ones that they have to use in the movie when they have the ring that they attach to when they go into hyperspace? It's like a pointy uh, fighter that the Jedi use. Yeah, they sort of introduced that in um, episode two, and then they use it in the Clone Wars stuff. Whoopsie. Cool. Yeah, so anyway, you fly one of those, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but you're not playing as uh, like Anakin or Obi-Wan or anything. Your main character for this game is Adi Gallia, who is the Tholothian uh, woman. who is one of those cases where she was in the Jedi Council in episode two, but since they changed filming locations from uh, from a British studio to somewhere in New Zealand, they had to recast a lot of people and try and pretend they were the same characters, but then decided that that was stupid and nobody would buy it. Um, and then, so the new character or the new actor was made into a new character. So that's where Stas Ali came from. But Adi Gallia continued in the Clone Wars cartoons and stuff. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Okay, so it, while I'm swinging, I press this button. Yeah, okay, now change direction. So this is, yeah, this is just another case where the black woman is kind of the lead of the game, but there's also another playable character. It's a bit like Urban Chaos, because um, you can play as Nim, but I'd argue that given the way the plot works and um, the title of the game, that Annie Gallia, Master Gallia, is the, you know, the main character. Where I should be top billing. I must walk carefully. Indeed. So yeah, uh, Adi Gallia is a black lady who is played in the film by, uh, what's her name, Masasa Moyo, who is a British, I think British, um, oh no, sorry, I got that wrong. In the movie, she's played by Jin Clark, who is a British um, fashion model that she didn't have any lines or anything, so they just got her to sit in the background and look impressive. Um, yeah, the the Masasa Moyo is a person is um, who plays her in the game, the voice actress. She has a lot of spoken dialogue in the game because she's the main character. Um, so Masasa Moyo is uh, an 
is a Canadian, African Canadian. Well, like her father's African, her mother's Canadian. Which makes her African Canadian, I suppose. Um, and what else have I written here? Oh yeah, she was played by Angelique Perrin. Angelique Perrin in um, the Clone Wars show, who is African American. So yeah, Adigalia is <laughs> not African American because she's from she's an alien from a different galaxy, but she's a black woman, obviously. Um, I don't know if the Lothians are supposed to be near human or a bit more different, because they have they all seem to have these head tentacles, um, and we see a few of them over the course of these cartoons and spin-offs and stuff. Katuni in one of the Clone Wars arcs, the youngling, is another uh, member of that species, and she's also black. So are, are all the members of that species black? Who knows? Um, anyway, they all have these head tentacle things, which I'm not sure if it's part of their biology or if it's a hat. Ah, let's not fall down there, because we'll have to redo a part. Anyway, since Jedi Starfighter stars a black woman and a Star Wars woman, which is a theme I did in a previous stream for Mysteries of the Sith, I feel like I absolutely need to play uh, Jedi Starfighter on stream at this point, at, at some point. Um, probably the GameCube version since the Dolphin Emulator is so good, but yeah. My computer doesn't always handle streaming and playing GameCube games at the same time very well. So we'll see if that works out or not. Um, that's also, I think, the reintroduction of Siri Tachi, who was like a love interest for Obi-Wan in a series of novels. Okay, nice cutscenes here. Very heavily compressed, a lot of JPEG artifacts. But I do like the art style. I think that shines through past the, <laughs> the awful compression. Um, anyway, I like my nails. I just have them done. So this is the guy. I know about bowline. I know it's poison and I know you're covering it up. So did my girl Patience. Okay, so this is, this is the old Batman thing. Where, oh, I'm friends with Patience Phillips and Batman says, I'm friends with uh, Bruce Wayne. Um, that's why you killed her. What? I fired her for incompetence. Sad, isn't it? That your last words will be a lie. Oh well. I swear, I don't know anything about this. He's not lying. Stop right there, Catwoman. I'm Detective Tom Lone, and I've been tracking you for some time now. Okay, so this is his introduction into the plot. Not today, Lone. That's interesting. We got, like, my entire other stream... We didn't meet, like, the main characters, so that's her love interest in the movie, basically, that detective guy. And the woman is ends up being the main um, antagonist. Anyway. Mmm, all these men just for me? Sorry, guys, no time for playing right now. I'd better climb the rigs again and try and escape over the rooftops. Oh, that's my favorite thing. Climbing the rigs. Oops. Didn't get that. Attack off well. You didn't see nothing, buddy. Yeah, tap, 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 tap. Done. <clears throat> so yeah, I was excited to find out about Jedi Starfighter. Usually in the, in you know these games, you're playing as Obi Wan and Anakin. And like at this point, I couldn't care less about them. They've just been in so many things and in so many games. These guys aren't very attentive, are they? Alright, so... Climbing the ring, but this door's open. I guess I'll just go through here. Okay. So now I go do this again? This isn't the same area, is it? Or am I backtracking in the reverse direction? Yeah, maybe that's what I'm doing. Nope, not that way. Alright, this... Is this what I'm supposed to do? Is this the same way I went before? Oops. Hmm. 
<clears throat> oh, the gem's back. Oops. You know what people love in games is doing the same thing again. I guess that's like just grinding in MMOs and stuff, so. Okay, so that's four more games added to the list. Um, I've got I've got four more after this. So what's next? The Princess and the Frog, of course. Um, the Disney movie, which was their last traditionally 2D animated movie, and the first one to star a black princess, Tiana. Um, although they had people of color before with Mulan and Pocahontas. Yeah, so since it was made in like a certain time where Disney films still got game adaptations. Oopsie. Yeah, like there was a while where they weren't, like a lot of films just didn't get adaptations and then there's a period in more recent years where if you were going to get a game, it would be like a Disney Infinity playset or something. But this is between those two times. So in the time of like Tangled um, and Princess and the Frog. So anyway, Princess and the Frog had a game on the Wii and also on the DS. Um, I haven't like looked really deeply into the gameplay, but to some extent, they're both kind of mini-game collections. I think there might be more actual gameplay in the DS one. So that's a candidate for streaming at some point. Um, what happened? What just went wrong? <laughs> I thought I did like an end of level transition, but actually fell to my death. Okay. <laughs> no, no death right now. Okay. Did I wrong warp or something? Why am I replaying the same levels just with some enemies put in? Video game padding. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, I, I noted about like who voiced Tiana in um, the Princess and the Frog games and movies and stuff. So yeah, they did get an African American actress for the movie, which is nice. Um, as I was saying earlier, with people playing their own um, ethnicity and stuff. But let's see, for the game, Tiana was, well actually the weird thing about the game was there were like, the credits list had both people from the movie listed and other people as voices, so I'm thinking maybe they reused some lines from the movie as like archive um, uh, voice lines but also recorded new ones for gameplay sections or something. Um, so in addition to Anakin Noni Rose, who is the voice actor for the movie, um, there was this other woman listed, Patricia Kazadi, playing Tiana, who isn't even American, she's Polish, but she's um, African-Polish, which is not really phrase you really say too often. Oh. Hmm. Tricky jumps. Isometric platforming is really difficult. I, I am certain I said this last time about this, but playing games like, um, well, just from a GBA reference frame, like uh, Rayman Hoodlum's Revenge, uh, Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge, a lot of revenge games actually, that's because they're sort of sequels to games on other platforms. Um, this way.
Oh, no, this one. Yeah. So this is new. Don't quite know how far to go this time. So. Perfect. Hmm? Do I go up there or do I go in here? Okay, that's... It's not in there. That's a red herring. Huh? What? What does it want me to do? It wasn't... What? <laughs> Hang on. It's not going in here, and that's not the answer. So... It's jumping off this, maybe? Oh! Didn't it just kick me off that? Whatever. We're still ascending. We found out that that guy was an unwitting accomplice in the attempted murder, or actual murder, of uh, patients. You may have met your match, Catwoman. Yeah, don't, don't count on it, buddy. I don't want to hurt you, Tom, but I will. And like most boss fights, apparently, I'm just going to continually stun lock you with attack on boost. Simple attack combos too. I'm just button mashing people. Can you walk any slower, dude? Hi, Catwoman. It's Laurel. I need your help. I think I'm onto something. Meet me at the mansion? I decided she's now a valley girl. Ah, later at the mansion, she's in her underwear? Or is that just like a dress? I don't know, we'll find out. What did you find? The answer to most of my problems, I don't, the bowline will launch on schedule. It has to, and no one is like going to stop it. Not Slaviki, not George, and like, not you. You killed Slaviki? Not George. George became expendable. I I was everything they wanted me to be. Then I turned 40. They gave me a cake without candles and threw me away. Life's a dog. Doesn't mean you get to be one. I wonder if that line was different in the film. <laughs> Just watch me. Oh, what's this? Take a look at the gun I used to kill my husband. Oh, is she framing Catwoman now? What's going on? Oh, yeah. It's the Catwoman! She's got a gun! See, I told you. She's the bad guy. You've got it coming to you. This is not over yet. Ooh. Look at that. Elite troops all around Hedare HQ. Sneak, 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 sneak. Stupid guards cannot see me. Oops. Okay, that one didn't notice. So yes, that was uh, Princess and the Frog. I like licensed games, you might have realized this at this point, but I try not to write them off immediately. I've just played actually the Star Wars Episode 3 game, which the movie is miserable, but the game is uh, decent, at least on DS. Uh, I don't know about the other versions. The DS one is like this really cool belt scrolling beat em up. But the sprite art and animation is really well done. I really dig that. A lot of frames of animation and nice, nicely done pixel art. I like it a lot. Anyway, so let's see what's next. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the next one I could find was a game called Venus Poland. The case of the Grand Slam Queen, and yes, that's right, it stars Venus Williams, the tennis player, world class, top of her field, but also good at solving mysteries or something, I don't know. This is um, one of those hidden object games for PC computers, um, which is also like a mystery solving thing, I guess. Um, 
yeah, Venus Williams game. <laughs> it's kind of a casual game. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's all there on Moby Games. Um, yeah. So, yeah, anyway, Venus Williams. <laughs> She's a very good tennis player. And popular and powerful enough to get her own video game. And not like a tennis video game. Like, I want to make that clear. You know... <laughs> Some celebrity sports people get video games that where you play the sport that they play, but no, not this time. <laughs> of course, there's some absolutely excellent uh, basketball games from the 90s. Uh, one that I will play on stream one day, Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City, because the lead designer was Amy Hennig, and that can be a good, like, women developers in the industry kind of thing. Um, but then you've got like Shaq Fu and just, it's, it's just crazy, um, and stupid. Yeah, I think like sports themed action games is a pretty cool subgenre or stupid subgenre that is also fun. Um, yeah, so that was that. Venus, the case of the Grand Slam Queen, 2010. Uh, next thing I had was uh, another Assassin's Creed game. So I already talked about Liberation on the Vita, how it stars Evangeline, um, no, Aveline, whatever her name is, Aveline something, um, who is a black woman assassin. So, you know, she, she got her own game there, but she also was, playable in a DLC for, uh, which one? Assassin's Creed 4. So the DLC is called Aveline, Aveline, Aveline probably. Um, and it makes her playable and it gives her a, a, a little campaign. Oh, she's a Templar? Oh, what, see, this is, <laughs> I don't know anything about this series. Um, some of the games, the assassins are actually the bad guys, like that's the twist, and you play as a Templar. So I guess this is one of those. Yeah, thanks for... <laughs> Uh, clearing that up, I guess. Um, anyway, she's uh, either an assassin or a Templar. Um, I doubt the gameplay is much different, because um, that's the way Assassin's Creed games work. Hold on a second. My feet are cold. I'm going to put my slippers back on. There we go. Uh, yeah, so there's a brief like story DLC that they added where you can play as um, her in Assassin's Creed 4 because they take place in the same time frame. Um, Liberation was originally a sort of spin-off to 3, um, but I think 4 is meant to be in, in that same sort of time as well. I don't really know. Like I said, no idea. But yeah, that's, that's a thing. She's in that, so there you go. And that brings us up to 2016 with um, something called Virginia. What's the wall jump thing? Can I not do that? Yeah, I sort of did it there. I got a wall jump up to that pole, don't I? Or do I need to wall one this way? I just got up that way, right? Yeah, I did. Nope. <clears throat> yeah, so Virginia is an interesting game for computers and the PS4 and Xbox. It's kind of an interactive story game. Um, apparently, from what I read, there's limited interactivity, um, but it has a really interesting art style. You play as uh, like an FBI agent or something investigating the stuff, and so like the story kind of plays out and you make decisions at certain points um, which can change how things play out um, but yeah it's got this sort of low poly minimalist kind of art style to it and it looks really cool um yeah oh yeah and there's no voice acting either so we sidestep that problem Okay. Oh yeah, Gibbon says 
Assassin's Creed 4 features the grandfather of the main character of 3. Oh, well, I don't know what Avaline's doing there. Who knows? If it's, th like, two generations before. Whatever. Um... <laughs> Actually, Gibbon's not sure about that, so he says he can't remember the details and says whatever. <laughs> you seem to be a big fan of the series, but like it is hard to keep up with because there's so much material um, that comes out for it. Ubisoft likes to milk it, obviously. Um, but like, are you still following it or have you lost interest kind of thing? I'm curious. Mm, that's not the correct thing to do. Oh, I can make that. Okay. Oh, I pulled his gun away. That's nice. Hey, dude. Get dunked. Yeah, take that. Whoa! -ho! That was close. Or was that a baton? I like this whip kick move. Um, yeah, so that's the whole list that I've got so far. I should probably type that out in a better format. Um, maybe I'll do a blog post about it. Man, I used to do more blog posts that weren't just like reviews or um, creative works that I'd done. You know, comics and pixel art and stuff. Oh, that was the progress point. Okay, whatever. Maybe I should um, make this into one of those. There might be uh, an audience for it. I know that I was an audience for it when I was trying to make the list. If there had been a list like that, it would have been interesting. Could discuss these issues and such. Oh, what's going on? Do I need to go down now? Oh! Now I need to go up here. I think this might be a wall jump situation. Go! Yeah, nice! Getting the hang of this climbing and swinging stuff. Interesting. Yeah, good stuff. Gibbon says he's a big fan of the beginning of the series, but then he hate he hated Ezio in his games. Massively let down by number three as well, um, which failed to deliver on every single thing they promised in its announcement, and he basically gave up on the series. Wow, that's harsh, dude. Sorry to hear that. It's tough when you are a fan of something and then it becomes something different from what you enjoyed about it. Uh. Um, the next game, uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, was basically a Pirates of the Caribbean game and had little to do with the main Assassins vs Templars plot, and they dropped the numbering after that, and I just don't even care anymore, he says. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that's not even bringing up all, all the spin-offs, like I said, like the Liberation and anything on a handheld. Uh, there was one on DS, I think, um, which was an Altair story, I believe. And then there were like some side-scrolling ones. Um, <laughs> Given says the game they just announced is literally just the Odyssey, like the story, the Greek epic, the Odyssey, but with an Assassin's Creed fam framing sequence, like what the hell, he says. There were a few on DS. Yeah, I know one of them was an Altair one. There might have been an Ezio one too. I don't know. I was pretty put off by Ezio too, actually. Not that I have like any real investment in the series. Uh, what are we doing now? <laughs> Half a one, checking in. To all units, we've got an intruder alert. Switching to automatic security. Two minutes. Be back here with your magnetic keys before the laser grid is triggered. After that, the building will be impregnable. Thank you for that exposition, security guard. You know, one of the reasons this was memorable to me, this game, was there was some instances of, like, really funny guard dialogue that I had at a certain point in the game. Um, but unfortunately, I haven't really seen much like that during this stream. Some witty dialogue. I'm looking forward to if there's any more of that. Okay, four keys again, I assume. That's three. 
Yeah, with such a big series like that, it's much more tenable to just be involved, to be interested in like a sub branch of it. Like if you just played Altair games or something. Altair was in uh, Academy of Champions football. Oh, here it is. Yes, let me in. Okay. <laughs> hey, watch it, buddy. Hey, this is a restricted area. You shouldn't be in here. Well, hello there. Let's see what you're made of. Try this one for size. <laughs> I like that whipping objects into people thing. Using environments in combat. Lose your way, lady. Whip the bin, whip the bin. Oh, yeah, whip the gun that works too. I better make use of this super mode while I have it. Don't you block me, you jerk. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Lasers. Gibbon says. The early Altair stuff was very good, very focused, and AC2 was still okay, but it was less focused, had a lot of busy work filler. Yeah, I get I get that that's an issue with those games. Um, and quickly devolved from an exploration of grey versus grey morality, in which both sides have valid arguments and think they're right, like the first Assassin's Creed, um, and just turned into Renaissance Batman, who murders anyone who even had anything to remotely do to with... Uh, who even had anything to do with the, mer the fall of his father. Do you like it? Wait, what just happened? I don't think I missed something. There. Okay, so I just killed a guy in the men's toilets. Three more guys came out. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. Mm. Do you like it? Mm, sass. Yeah, why do you think that happened, Gibbon? Was it like mainstream appeal? Was there a different rider or something? Getting a break from the character and starting another one was it an excuse to change the tone? Okay, I got a key. Can I find something in here? I think... No, that was just for enemies to come out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sentence did get away from you. Renaissance Batman just murders anyone who gets in the way. Or who murders anyone who had even any... <laughs> and then I can't read it, which is the other problem. Murders anyone who even had anything to remotely do with the death of his father. Okay, now we've got that sorted. Hey, stop that. Go away. Get out of here, you pervert! <laughs> so we got some very uh, shy guards in here. <laughs> I'll whip you through the door. Actually, that might be the ladies' toilets. Since this is clearly the men's over here. So I don't know who those three ladies were in those stalls. Um... Oh, nice bridge skyway kind of thing <laughs> some vanity there from the villainess she's got big pictures of her face on the walls george's office so yeah we're tracking um uh laurel was it yeah laurel hadair by her, the smell of her perfume yes whipping guns away is the best Or something. Yeah, don't have a key. 
Something needs to be done here. I must be approaching the end of the game at this point. We're, we're getting towards the confrontation with the villain. Oh, nice coffee machine on the counter there. Okay, so we're gonna stealth this guy. Oops, that didn't work. Okay, how about this? Yeah, take that. Take that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, back here. No. Not back here either. Rewind. No. Let's try this encounter a little differently. Do, do, do. Yeah. They are just so oblivious. Wait, what? I thought I got you. What? Man, these guys do a lot of damage. Very quickly took all my health down. Oh, they got that combo. They're still locking me now. Using my own tricks against me? Very harsh. Hold on. Okay, keep at a distance. That's the way. Ah, oh, good. Oh, look at those greeny pictures the GBA at its finest aha very clever game <laughs> babe you look so good oh, this is a guard talking to the picture there's some some of that amusing dialogue oh whoops tried to stop him didn't quite make it oh what's this <gasps> Hidden key card. Ah, we're, we're back on the Assassin's Creed train. Gibbon says Brotherhood, which I think is the second title in the in the quote unquote like Assassin's Creed 2 trilogy, because there was like Ezio had a game and then they were like, oh, let's do another one, and then hey, we'll do another one. So there were three games that are like part of Assassin's Creed 2's story, sort of, something, I don't know. Um, did my post about Assassin's Creed 2 not go through? The Brotherhood one did. Um, the one where you said that AC2 devolved from Grey Morality and then he became Renaissance Batman. If there was another one after that, I didn't see it. This is a problem with Twitch and not a long... Um, long chat entries sometimes get blocked. All right, I got a key, so I need to take it somewhere. Wait a minute, how does this make any sense? Geography. I come out of that vent, and then I go through this door. That must be like a long roundabout vent thing that they just skipped over. Oh yeah, the key must be for this part. So this one? Nope, the other one. Um, oh good, yes, we've, we've cleared up the chat thing. And I will read Gibbon's impressions about Assassin's Creed 2 because I find it fascinating. Um, he says, you can see in the concept work for AC2 that they were putting the same care and thought into it as AC1 but I think the popularity pushed them to get it out the door early, which is why some of the later chapters, some, whoops, some of the middle chapters were cut and released later as DLC. Mm, that's the Ubisoft business practices affecting game design. That's a no-no. Um, okay, we lost a bit of health from the laser. Oh, hello. Purdy's demanding attention. Hold on. Let me check if our heat is on.
try explain it to you, then you'll be perfectly accommodating. That's how cats work. Okay, I turned up a heater. We got her a little radiant heater because she's old and she doesn't like the cold in Canberra. Poor little baby. And I think it, it is it is helping. Um, because recently when she's been basking in front of this little heater, she eventually gets too hot and, and goes somewhere else and lies down on the carpet. And goes, ooh, that was a bit much. Oh, wow, okay. We've whipped some paperwork and caused it to fall on a laser, which started a fire, which got the attention of some guards, and then the game is encouraging me strongly to hide. Security! Fire in Office 34 Sec 2. Turn security lasers off! Copy that, Unit 7. Freaking pen pushers never use the trash like they ought to. Hello, boys. Oops. That was supposed to be stealth. Ooh, 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 nasty. Why don't we go a little bit of super mode here? When you beat up guards, you get plenty of that back, I think, so. Hey, hey, hey! I'm not appreciated, Sonny. Good. Okay. Anyway, um, I was reading Gibbons Impressions of Assassin's Creed 2, Part 2. They went with silhouette recognition with the monk-style assassin's outfit instead of one that fit the time period. Why the uh, um, And also, yeah, so that that's an issue. Um, it's kind of the same thing that happened with flanderization of the Jedi from between the original trilogy, or even between, like, Star Wars and Empire. Um, especially noticeable in Return of the Jedi when uh, Sebastian Shaw shows up as a ghost and he's got the same robes that Obi-Wan had, when really, like, you would think the reason that Obi-Wan and Yoda were wearing robes like that is because they were hermits living in remote environments and had to protect themselves from the elements um but no all jedi just look like that now because that's the way they look um anyway the same thing kind of happened with uh the assassin outfit as given is saying because altair wore it to blend in with monks in his home you know time period and then suddenly they all look like that because it's quote unquote iconic or whatever I found some evidence. Interesting. Sure is messy in here. Lose your way, lady. Hey there, big boy. Let's dance. Oh, you're gonna wish you'd never been born. I don't know what region that is, but that's, that's the gods. Because I say so. Ow, hey. No. Stop it. Cruel. Cruel fate. Yeah, I gotta be careful about these guys' attack patterns. They do a lot of damage. Like I said. So, what else did I say? Um, yes. Also, uh, an issue with Assassin's Creed 2 he had was that um, side missions were mostly just filler instead of linking into giving Ezio more options during his assassinations. Yes. Agreed. They should be worth something. They should be. Side missions should give you something important. Or something that is of value to the main game. Instead of just being something to, like, checklist boxes. No. Okay, kite them a bit more. Be careful. Yes! Use the environmental objects. Oh no. Did she like do a purr when she killed a guy? That's cool, I guess. Nice. Okay, I'm out of here. Oh, here's Laurel. There'll be a bonus of two million dollars for each one of you once they make me company CEO. Oh, these are her collaborators. In a hostile takeover. And what happens if they make the connection? I mean, when the symptoms start showing, 
We deny it. Oh, I've completely changed her voice. Uh, and if they pursue us, they'll have to prove it. As we'll have changed the bowline formula. Hmm. All we have to do now is to find the test results George hid and destroy them. Right, so... They've got a cosmetic that's poisonous, but they're covering it up. Because they used it to kill people. Uh, I don't know. Someone's been poking around in his desk. She's meowing again. I don't know if I can hear her, but it's appropriate for the Catwoman stream. That was close. Move again and I'll put one in your heart. Tom, I have evidence the bowline is dangerous. <gasps> oh no. Put down your weapon. Shoot them. The guy's a cop. I said shoot them. <gasps> Tom. Oh no. She shot him. How touching. You actually care about this guy. Love is a weakness. Armando, take the cop up to the rooftop and call the chopper. Oh my, what a development. Um, do, do, do. Yes, so part three. Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, um, was straight up planned as an expansion, but was moved to be a full retail release. Uh... And it shows with them removing all the little things like shops and fast travel points and such and making you grind filler content in order to get them back and fill in the map, quote unquote. So yeah, I didn't realize it was just a, an expansion that was a bit fleshed out like that. And then Gibbon goes on to say about part three of um, Assassin's Creed 2 was called Revelations. He said, yeah, he says he was excited about it because it was going to be memories within memories with Ezio reliving Altair's later years by artifacts, but that turned out to be such a small part of the game. Um, he says, I think one of the reasons the first AC game is so tightly paced and fully fleshed out is that they didn't have to do the bulk of the world building as it's based on a rather good novel called Alamut. I didn't realize that. That's interesting. But yeah, they, they based it on that and at least the historical portion of it, I, I expect. Um, and that gave them a story to work with. There we go. Okay, so that plot development's happened. Surely we must be close to the end now. Um, as this is not a normal stream, I will continue as long as I have to to finish this game today, just so you know. Don't feel you have to stick around for the whole thing. Ah, really? Buster. What exactly is this area right now? Ooh, nice big jammies. Give me the jammies. Oh, yeah. Seems like they just fill in some meter. Don't think I've... Oh, honey. Oops. heat she'd ever need but I think what she wants is company well I'm kind of mad at her anyway because she threw up three times this morning well once but in three different locations and she didn't use a litter box properly oh event I see yeah she does this thing where like instead of peeing in the litter box she pees next to it yeah it's, it's very charming anyway cat issues what can you do I'm gonna miss her. We've been cat sitting her right for like I guess a couple of months now maybe. But she's gonna go back to her actual owner soon, which are my parents in law. Ah. 
Gibbon has linked a book, an Amazon page for the book. Alamut Scala translation Vladimir Bartol. So this is a book that was not originally in English. Is that what I'm getting from that? The art department. Hey, whatever, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just ignore the guy in front of you the whole time. That's fine. I worked out pretty well. I tried stealth briefly in this room, but it quickly devolved. But that's okay. Hmm. Oh, um, whoops. Oh, the lasers. Can I do this? Nope. The pink ones are pretty much instant kill, the red ones just do some damage. Nope. I was trying to do a wall run over, I don't think it's gonna work. Clear those and then nope. Maybe smaller jumps. Ah, uh, you always end up hitting them, don't you? It's tricky. Hmm, something's going on here. Can't climb up here. Oh, oh. That was it, I landed between them. Oh, it was originally a Slovenian book written in 1938. Wow. That's a deep pull for a video game plot. How did they come across that? Is this an acknowledged thing that they based the story on this book, or did they just kind of rip it off? I was interested in at least one of the other Assassin's Creed Chronicles spin-offs. I think it's the Chinese one where you play a woman assassin. And those the the Chronicles games is three of them are supposed to be they're supposed to have like more of a focus on the art style um, and to look interesting and different. So that sounds cool to me. Even though they're not like proper, you know, they're not the same formula as other Assassin's Creed games with a big open world to explore and stuff. And the same thing to do a million times in a row. They're more like 2D puzzle platformers. Those aren't doors. Are these doors? What's a door in this room? <laughs> I think this is another climbing room. It was translated around Europe. The book. Given was alerted to this book by the Assassin's Creed community, it has been translated around Europe and eventually made its way to the US after 9 11. Whoops. Wall running. Isn't that a great thing to have in a game? Like, and it's so simple to do. I don't see how anyone could be tripped up by that. Oops. Hey, wall running. Isn't that a great innovation? Yep. Come on. Oh yes, there's an interview where they cite the book as an inspiration. A legally distinct inspiration. Such that they don't have to pay the writer. Although I suppose the writer might be dead by now. It was published in 1938. Sorry, I'm being cynical. What was that? Oh. I fell and that meant I fell down to the next screen. Yeah, I mean it depends how based on it is based on 
how based it is. So based. Oh, actually, I just noticed the music of this section. That's not bad. Whoops. Go. Whoa, not like that. <laughs> like that. Ugh, oh, no, it's one short, then one long. You always have to hold R for the right amount of time, and then you swing off at a different speed. Okay, Laurel is back, apparently. Okay, so we're on the rooftop. Hello, Armando. Oh, baby, you are so dead. Whatever, dude. I'm just gonna stun mark you. Gibbon says, um, it has been a while since he played the game, but if he recalls correctly, uh, they obliquely reference the events of the novel as having happened sometime in the not too distant past. Mm, interesting. Sweet dreams, honey. Kick. This is a police emergency band. Officer down, roof of the head air building. Send a medical team now. Who is this? Just do it, you goon. Hang in there, baby. Baby. Since when is she calling him baby? Uh, what do I do now? Oh, okay. Here we go, the confrontation. None of this had to, oh, what happened to her face? Oh, oh, this might be the thing. None of this had to happen. Why didn't you kill George when you had the chance? Yeah, so part of the story of the movie is that, you know, she's experimenting with dangerous chemicals in her cosmetics. And part of that is that she makes some kind of super power skin cream or something and um, it makes her skin all hard like rock or something. Um, I think that's something that happens. <laughs> if I recall reading the plot synopsis ages ago. Um, but yeah, she's also talking about a mask now. Maybe she's like disfigured or something? I don't know. I forgot. Anyway, I'm not the only one with a mask. I'm still beautiful. I'll always be beautiful. Bowline did that to you? Yes. I was the first to use it. Okay, here we're getting some actual plot dumps. When the effects started to show, I used more. That's kind of dumb. Like, she didn't think that through, did she? How can you sell it? Why should I be the only one to suffer? Wow. Wow. That's some supervillain logic right there. Just let me go. I'm not a killer. Oh, okay. I guess she's Batman now. You're going to have to live with what you are. No! Yeah, I guess she let herself drop rather than live with what she is. Oh! <laughs> okay. An electronics art game developed by Magic Pockets. Thank you, Magic Pockets. Um, yeah, good timing. That's the end. I don't know if we really got the full picture of the story of the movie from that. Um... And we didn't get a whole lot more amusing dialogue, but um, I do feel a sense of closure now. And you know, this was just something to do on a Monday afternoon because I was bored. Um, yeah. And we had a good conversation about Assassin's Creed. I learned a lot uh, about why the changes that were made in number two and the inspirations for number one and uh, other things. Okay, Gibbon says he could see them fudging things a bit and having Altair be the boy from the book. Although some stuff in Revelation would seem to wreck from that idea. Well, we can ignore Revelation, right? Like you were saying earlier, that's when things kind of went off the rails a little bit. So let's say the only canon things in Assassin's Creed are the first game, that book, and uh, I don't know, the DS game. <laughs> the one with Altair. Like you said, there's a few. I don't know anything about them. Gee, these credits are interesting, aren't they? It's the same music that we've heard like the whole game through, and they're going kind of slowly. Um. Anyway, I didn't see this game mentioned very much in lists of um, games 
about black women, but I did actually see it come up in some discussions about movies where uh, that are led by a black woman. Um, on some like film critique discussion websites and stuff. Uh, yeah, how like we need more minority characters leading films uh, for representation and stuff, which I agree with. Um, let's see, I guess they pointed to Zoe Saldana as having a few prominent roles in recent years. She's in, she's in the new Star Trek. Uh, she was the lead in this one movie, in this one action movie, but I can't remember it now. Yeah, they were specifically mentioning action movies because there's a lot of other kinds of movies that have um, black women in the lead role, like Precious or Hidden Figures, um, that kind of thing. Both good movies. Uh, Given also recommending the PSP Assassin's Creed game. And the DS game Altair's Chronicles starts out, stands out a bit as it directly contradicts later ideas of what the pieces of Eden actually are, set down in stone after the original series creator left Ubisoft. So I was just filling my controller and I feel like I broke it, but I think it's okay. Um, yeah, that might be a good point to cut off what you consider canon when the original creator left. Anyway, that's good. That's that reminds me of what happened with Kingdom Hearts when like the manga author came on as like the lead story developer for the actual game series, and things went a bit skew with. Um. Okay. Well, I'm really digging this conversation about Assassin's Creed, but the game's over. There's nothing more I can do with it, so I'm gonna have to end the stream. Um, any last words, Gibbon? Thank you for being here again. Um, this was fun, and I feel like I need to type up a blog post about the whole um, representation in games thing. Um, Cause, I don't know. I used to write things more. I miss it a little bit. But that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. Um, this was fun. I'll be back on Wednesday for normal time. Um, I don't actually know what I'm doing for that, but I'll figure it out in the next two days. So yeah, thank you, and see you next time. Bye-bye.